Welcome back to another series in our conversation called Your Voice Matters with Better for Kenya, Equality Now and Capital FM. I'm your host, Janet Mbogwa. And as always, in all these episodes, we're trying to raise awareness, amplify messaging around gender-based violence, trying to also give a call to action to all of you, not just to wait um, for the government to do their part, but also educating and encouraging you to play yours as well. We've had various themes over the last few weeks, and thank you so much for engaging us on those. And so today we're talking about gender-based violence and sexual harassment on campus, something that's very real and close to so many women, many women, also a few men around the world. We're shedding some light on the situation here in Kenya, and I have an incredible panel to help me do that. We have Abel Mutua, who, by the way, is our first man on the Your Voice Matters conversation. Oh, yes. Earlier on, he was saying, he was saying how he's going to harp on on that for so long, and with every answer, he'll say, as the first male panelist. <laughs> you will not hear the end of it. You know, he's an actor, <laughs> producer, you know, presenter, and just all-round storyteller as well, so it's great to have you with us. Thank you. Thank uh, you we much. have Foy Wamboy, who is an um, influencer, actress, advocate as well. So good to have you. And of course, we have Julie Gital from Equality Now, always dropping gems. <laughs> and we're excited to have her on this uh, panel as well. Um, and so it's also to the lead up for Generation Equality Forum. That's also the reason we're having these conversations is 26 years ago was the Beijing Women's Conference, mm -hmm. a global moment, um, a massive coming together of women from around the world. So 26 years later, we're taking stock what's happened, what's progressed, what more needs to be done. And so that's part of the reason we're having these conversations as well. So let me start by asking your own experiences or what you know about sexual harassment on campus. I know that, you know, for you as a campus student, <laughs> maybe I should actually start with you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the experience or the stories are probably very real every day to you. What's your first thought about the state of sexual harassment on campus in Kenya? I mean, I think, I, I, of course, this experience, I'm not going to say it's my own experience because fortunately for me, I haven't mm. directly come into contact with sexual harassment on campus. But I know of people, my friends, acquaintances who have gone through this, whether you're at a party and, uh, you know, a boy mm -hmm. takes advantage of you. Because, I mean, you're straight out of high school. Some people come to, high, to university when they're 16, 17. And so you're very impressionable. Someone tells you, oh, this is how it is. This is how it's done. Mm. And you go with it. Also, of course, there's a whole story of lecturers <sighs> making you fail <laughs> mm. <laughs> or hiding your papers True. Um, <laughs> so that they can get sexual favors from you. It's something that's known. It's like what you can call an open secret. Mm. Everyone knows that it's happening. Everyone knows of people it's happened to, but we are all like hush hush about it. Mm. Very few people are talking about it and those who are, you're seen as an outcast. And I mean, you don't want to be an outcast on mm. campus, you know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So many people choose to be quiet. Yeah. It's almost mm. like um, the way you've said it's an open secret. There's a there's an acceptance of it in a way yeah. because mm. until we have real um, results in terms of putting perpetrators to task, mm. it's sort of like, oh, this is just how it is, as you've said. Um, Abel, I want to come to you even as I read <coughs> uh, a statistic here from the nation that says one in two female students and one in four male students have been sexually harassed to some degree mm. at the hands of staff at Kenyan universities. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, you know, that's um, according to this. So um, your own thoughts, Abel, your own experiences, what you saw, what yeah. you heard, and then taking stock of it now and saying, how is this still happening right now? Yeah, actually, I love the fact that you're having this conversation because it really needs to be had. Yeah. Um, <coughs> something I came to realize is culturally, th there are a lot of places where we go wrong, mm -hmm. but since nobody's talking about it, people tend to think that it's the norm. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've spoken to a lot of young guys and even men from Ushago, and there's this narrative of Judy unajua mwanamke ni mtoto, so you tell her what to do. You know, wewe muambie kile kufanya. So you raise a, 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 a young guy in such an environment, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then she comes to Nairobi and meets Foy Pale University, mm. and they're wondering, kwa nini na wewe na kuita na ukuji? What's the problem? That's mm. how they've been raised from that. And that's why I keep saying some of these things are not taught their court. Wanaona pale mtaa vile tunadil na wasichana. Wakikuja huku kufoyo wanashanga, okay. Mm. So it becomes a bit, ah, 
mbona na kuita na ukuji unajua so i think we need twende pale chini mashinani we talk to these guys and tell them this is wrong i remember a funny story although it's a bit unrelated we went to western to kakamega some time back for a funeral and uh, I, I don't know what we were looking for. We, we went to different homesteads. And in one of the homesteads, the thing that we were looking for, atukupata. Mm -hmm. So one of our guys, it was at night, mm -hmm. he whistled. You know, it's a very Kenyan thing to do. Ah, hakuna. Kumbe, it's a taboo. And you could see this guy, yani the way he, he cringed. Why are you whistling at night in my homestead? Mm -hmm. Urona, as in, mm -hmm. the things that they've learned culturally, mm -hmm. they are so embedded in them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like we need to really speak. Yeah, to these guys I see what you're saying. So if if they can take that yeah. and hold it to heart so closely, yes. it would it would also be important to take to heart exactly. how we yeah. extend that. You know how we treat women, how we see women, how we perceive mm -hmm. them. Because there's a way they've there's been taught a, how to do it. And then also, if you're going to take that kind of perception, yes, um, and go to campus as you're saying, yeah. if that's what the the men have been socialized that you, you can yeah. command a woman to do yeah. ABCD. I, I do know of a situation where a friend of mine, um, she's quite young and she works in a workplace, she's in her mid-20s, mm. and her colleague who is also in his mid-20s, she asked him, could you please come to my desk and show me something? He's in his mid-20s and yeah. he went off on her. Ah. He said, how dare you summon me? Yeah, she said, I didn't summon you. <laughs> I asked you to help me. And yeah. so anyway, it turns out, luckily they were able to have a conversation Correct. about it. And he said, we don't, mm. where I come from, yeah, we, don't. we don't do that. And what I've been taught, we don't do that. So you can imagine he's in his mid-20s. This is sort of like last year, but one. Yeah. So it's a very recent thing. Yeah. And so, Judy, just based on what um, Foy and Abel are saying about how some of these issues are almost normalized, mm -hmm. accepted. Mm -hmm. When it comes to campus, um, what is it that we really need to look at, speak to, in order for this to start being taken seriously and for there to be you know, punishment where necessary, because a lot of the time people walk, walk away scot-free. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just before I jump onto yeah. that, Janet, I mean, I, I'm listening to what Abel was saying, and uh, we, we have a partner in Busia, mm. and they rescued a girl who had been married off, I think, at about 12 years old. Wow. Mm. Uh, she'd been raped by the teacher. She oh got no. pregnant, wow. and then the father or the family were paid off uh, by mm, the teacher, yeah. because in that community the teacher was valuable, and the money that was used, uh, the, the money that was paid, yeah. was used to pay for her brother to go to campus. Oh. Oh. So you can imagine if, in my view, and I, 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 I'm not going to say that he had a choice oh. in the mm. matter, mm. but in my view, if I'm in campus and I meet this guy, yeah. um, who, whose own sister was mm. violated and the proceeds of that rape are what have been used to have him come to campus, does he mm -hmm. know any different? Mm -hmm. Will he treat me any better? Does he think women are more valuable or not? Mm -hmm. Or you know, what's what's that arrangement? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we we indeed are coming to a space where there's different um, cultures, different values, mm -hmm. but then we don't bring our cultures, our values, our expressions to that place. We are regulated by the law. Yeah. We're regulated by policy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this is how a professional space works, and campuses are professional spaces. Yeah. So you could come with your own thoughts, ideas, ideologies, mm. which definitely need to be addressed. Uh, but then where the line is drawn is at the law and is at policy. Good. So at first instance, each campus needs to actually have a space for reporting mm. um, where violations are done. And such space is made public, is made aware, yeah. everybody mm. knows. For example, um, you're talking about a girl who's been violated at a party. Does she know what mm. to do? Mm. 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 Would, would any of us, I mean, uh, just extending the last conversation, if, if any of us gets a phone call from someone saying I've been I've been raped because it starts from sexual harassment mm -hmm. or you know a mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and then it moves on to yeah. you know someone is serving you and moves on to on to rape in that state would you even know in campus where to go mm -hmm. would you even know who to talk to um, do you know where to call mm -hmm. and so there there needs to be established mm -hmm. administratively yes. offices spaces yeah. counselors focal points mm -hmm. where everybody knows and you know it when you're not violated yeah. you know it when you're having a good time you know it when you're easy when you're having drinks you know it mm -hmm. yeah. so that when it happens you instinctively know i'll go there yeah. and something will be done mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's got to be a concrete referral process mm -hmm. so that i would be able to report it it, it should be escalated mm -hmm. um, where it's 
a violation within the law, it's directly taken through to, if it's the police for mm -hmm. investigation and we proceed in that direction, administrative course of action is also taken. Mm -hmm. But then not to forget you know, what, what has already been said, mm -hmm. we, we begin at hello. Yeah. Yeah. We begin at addressing the values, mm. we begin at addressing um, our thinking, so that by the time we're coming there, it's a few errant people then mm -hmm. who are being investigated mm -hmm. and getting summoned in administrative actions. Yeah, Good. that's so important when, when it starts from, from that far back. Uh, Foy, Judy has, has talked about the fact that there, has, there needs to be systems where mm -hmm. you know, somebody, a student can go report. Mm -hmm. um, from what you've heard and from the experiences that you've heard of or know of, mm -hmm. what usually happens when a student is harassed? Wh what, what happens next? Do you find that they remain mum mm -hmm. on it, that it's not known? Has anybody tried to report it? And if so, what happened? Can you speak to any experience? Um, I mean, of course, most people that I know personally are quiet about it. Mm. And yeah. at the end of the day, it's, I mean, you might want to help as a friend, mm. but there's only as much as you can do. Because I do know that there are systems in my university that help in such circumstances, but I don't know how effective they are. Mm. And I don't know if anything is actually done once something like that happens, yeah. you know? And especially when it comes to student and teacher relationships or mm. harassment, I think that's even a bigger problem. I yeah. think if it was student, student, then that can easily be dealt with. Yeah. But when it's someone who's in the faculty, someone who's mm. a dean or like, you know, mm. whatever, mm. it's a bit more different because he has a lot of power and yeah. there can't be consent where like, Mm. One person is more powerful than, yeah. than another. Mm. It's not consensual. And so many people will come and be like, okay, so you were 18, so you were, you were 20, you mm. were 21. But at the end of the day, do you have the power to say, no, this person can give you an F. Mm. Can, I mean, you've been studying for like four years. You get this lecturer who's decided that this is the only way you're going to pass. Are you going to say no? Mm. And if you do say no, is there something that's going to be done if you report it? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of like, what ifs and mm. fear and I mean power, the basis of, of power is, mm -hmm. you know, making people afraid yeah. mm -hmm. and ah, man, I don't know what can be done, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I know there are mm. places mm. where we are at a better point than we, uh, where we were a couple of years mm. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, some of these even conversations we're having, True. people were not having. Mm. Mm. So I guess we are better off. Yeah, we're, we're shifting something. Yeah. You want to oh yeah, something, then Judy will come a in here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A step at a time. Actually, that's a, a step. The best thing is to start. Yeah. I remember we did a documentary when I was still very young. Uh, it was a student's project, mm -hmm. and we traveled to Uko deep inside Rift Valley, and we were doing a, a documentary on FGM, and we were shocked by the fact that it was actually the women who were advocating for mm -hmm. FGM. Mm -hmm. Like we were in disbelief. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We went back there uh, recently, like mm -hmm. two, three years ago, mm -hmm. and somebody just started, you know, just putting those systems in place. And it, it's a very young lady, I forget her name. Mm. Right now, they're at a point where it is actually the men mm -hmm. who are arresting older women who are advocating mm. for oh, FGM. Wow. Yeah. yeah, like I was, Mm. It will be happy. Mm. So it speaks to the fact that if you are able to kind of come together, Correct. challenge it, yes. um, yeah. then it begins to, 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 to change. Yeah. I think, uh, Judy, you wanted to add something mm. because, yeah. Um, yeah, although I'm now taking away from. Oh. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, she, she raised for you something brilliant, mm. consent. Mm. You know, a lot of the times people think consent is yes or no, mm. right? And so you're 18, you know, come mm. on. I mean, mm. how are you complaining? Yeah. Um, but the truth of the matter is we need to understand that consent has different facets. Mm -hmm. um, so content, consent is being able to say yes completely mm -hmm. and without either coercion mm -hmm. or my mind has not been inebriated mm -hmm. um, or there's no threat mm -hmm. and then the other elements to apply mm -hmm. that um, I'm over 18 because if I'm a child I cannot consent mm -hmm. yeah. um, the and then if, if I'm if I'm um, mentally ill and all of the other issues that fall mm. therein 
And so we don't just do a broad stroke yeah. and say, you're 18, you consented. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about sexual harassment, which again, spans the entire you know, leap of things, mm -hmm. if you're in, an, uh, in a senior position, if you're a lecturer, mm -hmm. what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. What, 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 are you, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. I mean, is this student really able to consent? If you're the dean, mm -hmm. what are you doing? Mm -hmm. And there are policies that regulate that. Yeah. What, like, what, what, what are you, you are mm -hmm. coercing, yeah. you, you, are, you are threatening, you're putting pressure um, on, on this person to consent. And, and again, now back to, 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 to what Abel was saying in terms of you find culture has been entrenched so deeply, mm -hmm. you'll even find in, in that instance um, women who are then told, but they consented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because you, many girls, yes, are cut while they are minors, but you'll find that women mm -hmm. who are 18, but you consented. But you know what the coercion is? You will not be allowed to fit in the community, you will not be allowed to fetch water yes. yeah. uh, when other women are fetching associate. water, mm -hmm. you cannot associate. Mm -hmm. Um, most recently, you, you find, oh, you'll not cook for your husband because mm -hmm. you are now a child. Mm. You're a child, you've <laughs> just born, you know, several children, you're running the, you know, and mm. so on and so yeah. forth. And so there, mm. let, let us understand that there's coercion all round yeah. Yeah. to ensure that these things are perpetuated and are continued, mm. even when we say there's the law, there's yeah. the policy, mm. we are clear, we know. Mm. Yeah, I like speaking to that is, is so important. And I feel like it, it many times you almost want to say it, it should be an, an obvious thing, especially, and I think I've raised this before, we're having, there's a lot of exposure now, a lot mm. of conversations, mm. to a point where sometimes I ask myself, is it that you're choosing not to absorb it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? In a sense, right now, with the, with the numerous campaigns and conversations going on around sexual harassment and gender-based violence, mm -hmm. you almost really want to speak to people to, to take ownership of that information and begin to make a change in their own little way, in their homes, in their communities. And by pushing back, why then are you comfortable perpetuating it? Mm. You know, I, I think that's something that bothers me. I want to ask you, Abel, mm. what generally is the vibe on campus from a, from a man's perspective, from male student mm. looking at female student? I, I'm sure it's been a, a few years oh, for you. Oh, it has been. <laughs> but I want to I want to go back to the to yeah. the language that was used or yes. the way it was discussed. Was there a sense that hey, these things happen? Was there a sense of enabling it? What what was the con what were the conversations like? Actually, it was because uh, back back then we even the things we glorified. Uh, mm. <laughs> so if I call myself a pimp on campus, ah, me I'm a pimp. What does mm. a pimp do? A pimp slaps women and calls them bitches. That's that's a pimp, and and I'm Hold proud up. of oh, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just like <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, and, yeah. And, and we glorify that. <laughs> yeah. So even the people who are coming after us, mm. they look at us and they think, oh, okay, mm. oh, we'll so guy. okay. Mm. And then you think back now and you're wondering, what how were we, what was that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. And what was it was also that? because you saw that and you heard that from, yes. from other campus oh, students, yes. ETC? Yes, it, it was a thing. Yeah. yeah. It was a thing. I think it, it's so weird. Yeah. It's so weird, especially um, university guys. Yeah. Mm. There's... Oh God, it's it's fr almost frustrating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. honestly. Because I mean, you're also you. This is something yeah. you probably. <laughs> so I remember one time we were in. I was in first year. Yeah. It was first year, first sem, I think, or second sem. Yeah. And I remember this friend of mine went outside to smoke with a bunch of people. Mm. Little did she know that the whatever she was smoking was laced. So the guys mm. that she went to hang out with laced whatever they were smoking yeah. with mm. cocaine. And so you see that has a lot of effects on you. True. I remember she came into campus and we met her, like it was, we were going for lunch or something, I can't mm. remember properly, but we met her and we, we couldn't understand what was happening. Mm. And we don't even understand how she was able to leave wherever she was yeah. mm. and start her journey back. And you wonder, like, what would have happened if she mm. stayed there? Yeah. Mm. You know, yeah, true. if you're giving me something, I want to know what you're giving yeah. me. Mm. Otherwise, true. how can I consent to it? Uh -huh. Yeah. So yeah. she was, when, when you saw her, she was sort of frazzled oh, and yeah. she just wasn't yeah. there. And That's we were like, what wrong. did you have? And mm. it, it didn't add up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, okay. What are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's really scary, though. You yeah. know, especially, uh, you know, I think I also tend to follow a lot of cases mm. of sexual harassment on campus the world over. And it's just frightening. Mm -hmm. It's frightening that you're walking to your dorm at night and you, some people just don't turn up alive the next day because yeah. they were raped and murdered. Or, mm. you know, you're walking to your dorm or walking mm. home and you're, and you're harassed or raped. It's, yeah. it's so frightening and that these headlines 
are still showing themselves even now, yeah. you know? Um, and again, I think, Judy, the question is, we talk about the law and we talk about understanding coercion, which I really like that you brought up. Yeah. But as broad a question as this is, and maybe an obvious one, the gaps again. Mm -hmm. Because I always say, if you really care about um, an issue, mm -hmm. if, a, if a society really cares about women and women's rights, I feel like these would be addressed with a matter of urgency. And that's yeah. just not what I get. Mm, yeah. Again, not just here, the world over. True. It's changing a little bit. I remember there were cases out of the US where um, it, it wasn't that easy. In, in the years that have come, mm. the men who are always, especially if you're a poster child, like, oh, he's a good athlete, mm -hmm. let's just forgive him. It's now kind of starting to change. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, if you really cared about the safety, mm -hmm. you would treat it with the urgency it deserves. Mm -hmm. So there's the policies and the laws, but we still have lecturers sleeping with students. Yeah. We still have male students who are maybe, if you're popular or well-known or wealthy, mm -hmm. you know, you're putting that. So then who is not doing what? <laughs> that is enabling this to continue. Who, who needs to be called out? And we still have police officers who are brushing off people there you who go. are coming to report. Thanks yeah. for raising that as well, Abel, exactly. <laughs> Gosh, you, you've, you've stirred my mind up on 15 things as always. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah. let's, let's, let's just, okay, let's just start by, before we say who's dropping the ball, because many people are dropping the ball. Mm. Let's just start with um, the vulnerability that students have at that point in time. Majority, you've just turned 18, it could be 16, 17, but you've just turned 18 you have your newfound freedom. Mm -hmm. um, I did a public uni, so you've gotten boom or, or help, um, mm. so you've gotten loose cash. Mm. Um, you're, you're 18, so you could, you could go out. Yeah. Um, you're 18, so you're trying out. You're, you're free, you're not at home, you're in your own room, you're mm. doing your own thing. Mm. And so there's that, I'm independent, and I do not want to appear as a crybaby. Mm. Um, for, so I, now that we have the first male on the panel, <laughs> I will not speak. I will not speak <laughs> for the male, but I will speak for the for the girls and say that you don't want to be the crybaby. Yeah, you don't want to be the one who looked like she didn't know what she was about. Mm. You, um, you second guess yourself along the way. Um, if someone is going further than they ought to, pushing harder than they ought to, if a lecturer is is crossing a line, I mean, I I had lecturers cross a line. I mean, mm. I had my grade uh, for one of my units withheld, and and you're told also oh, guitar. But you know, but you know, you owe me guitar when you're thinking, uh, I, 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 what, what? I owe you what? what? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I owe you. And, and you're, you're looking at this person and you think, you've, you've got to be kidding me, you're a deer mm. in the headlights. Yeah. You're seated in an office, you're looking at the exit, mm. you're thinking, how does this actually go down? Mm. Mm. Um, and, and a lot of that, and yet you don't want to be the one who made noise about it. Mm. You, you've heard the stories. Again, in my campus, I'd heard the stories. There's one particular lecturer, for example, um, who apparently he would come into class and he would have a whole series of people, like 15 people, come and see me. You've done poorly, and it's both boys and girls, and so you can't suspect mm. you're none the wiser. But as he sees, as he checks down the list of the of the 15, there's a couple who he's you know he's zoned he's in on, mm. and so he, he will mess up with those. And one of the girls had been brave enough to complain, mm. but you know, colleagues, there's a camaraderie yeah. between the mm. colleagues, and they're go. thinking, how do we let down on of our own? Mm. And he was suspended for, I think, uh, is it eight months? Wow, mm. and was back on campus. And then what? Mm. Yeah. And so this is the atmosphere within which you know you're you're presenting young girls um, to complain or to speak out, then enter the system. So this is the atmosphere. So we've not even talked about how people will respond. Um, then enter the system. So who do, who's your first point of call when you've been violated? It's initially first your classmates, your colleagues, mm -hmm. um, maybe a social worker in within the campus if there are systems in place. Mm -hmm. And the questions again will arise. How were you dressed? Mm -hmm. Where were you? Was Victim it 7 p.m.? Mm -hmm. What were you doing? Where were you hanging out? Were you um, mm -hmm. So the first, the first what did you ball, say? <laughs> precisely. Mm -hmm. did, did, yeah. Did you did you have a drink? Yeah. yeah. Uh, didn't didn't you ask for it? Why were you? Um, <laughs> then mm. did, did you Such not did, did you not hear that that lecturer does that? Yeah. Yeah. So did you sit at the front of the class? And, you know, come on. Yeah. And so <laughs> at the at the end of the day, we start. So let's just start drawing that line of who's dropping the ball. Yeah. So the first is the first point of contact. Mm -hmm. The first people bring their perceptions and attitudes to that engagement and they think you're to blame. Mm. And so it does just doesn't shut you down, mm -hmm. it shuts everybody else down mm -hmm. who has ever experienced anything as violent or as vulgar because they can see mm -hmm. the one person who spoke up, it was her fault. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we start with the first point of call. 
then we move, for example, should we report it to the police stations? Mm. We've heard, we've all heard about gender <laughs> desks. Yes. Yes. <laughs> gender is just a, it's just a desk mm -hmm. with a police officer and majority of them have not placed that place in, in, in any privacy. And so at the end of the day, you're in line with a person who was drunk and disorderly and has just been told, spend the night, chief, here's your money, exchange, blah, 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 you're out. Mm. With, the, with, the, with the chicken thug, with wh whoever it is, you're all there mm. having this discussion with regards to, I was raped, I was violated. Mama ulikuwa umevaji, nguo ilikuwa aji, you know, all mm. of that, together with that. Mm. That's a problem. Let's talk about the forensics. There's still a debate amongst the medics as to who should sign your form when you've been violated. We've not even talked about you being swabbed if you've been raped. We've not talked about any of that. There's questions, is it the CEO, is it the doctor, is it the nurse? Because guess what? None of them want to come to court because mm. the case will be postponed. And I haven't gotten to the court yet. The mm. case will be postponed severally. So the doctors are like, I don't want to be the one to sign that form because I don't want to waste my time going to court. court. And so wow. there's a problem. Mm. So the doctors do not want to sign it. Mm. I haven't even began finishing the problems with the doctors. <laughs> There are two types. <laughs> for it's like wow. There are two types of forms. Yeah. Yes. You see, uh -huh. we all know about P3s. I mm. mean, all Kenyans yeah. know mm. about P3s. If you're slapped in Chapata P3, if P3. I'm this, I will get a P3. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine, they used to register sexual offences in a P3 form. So the P3 form it has a human body drawn, and so the nature of violation cannot even be detailed in that form. So activists and lawyers and human rights activated and agitated for a special form that allows the genitalia, whether male or female, mm -hmm. to be drawn mm -hmm. so that after a medical exam, they can articulate exactly where it is you are violated. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Arguments still abound as to whether we should use a P3 or a PRC post rape care form in court. Wow. So we have that argument across the piece and so it's not uniform to use it. And so you'll find someone who's been raped they will feel the P3 form. And so the details are a mess. Mm -hmm. We haven't talked about the justice process yet. So who's dropping the ball? Everyone. Shall I begin? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So at the end of the day, by the time we're talking about someone, I mean, we, we, let's mm. start, we've started at the culture point, mm. where everybody has an attitude, you know, uh, girls should get you know, your boyfriend in campus. That's, I mean, is how else do you think you we're going to court girls? How else do you think we're going to get a girlfriend? Mm -hmm. if, if you people are, and then, and this and the other, and that's the attitude mm -hmm. all the way all to the education. way there. Mm -hmm. And just one last thing with regards to the attitude within the campus space is, is just to say that as it's, it's an accepted, um, when people begin to push for sexual harassment laws, and they do exist, we do have it in civil and criminal law. The Sexual Offences Act, is it, I think section 28, speaks about sexual offences and speaks about sexual harassment, but in civil, uh, in employment act, we say beyond blah and, and so on, we also have it there. Mm -hmm. But when people began pushing for it, even in my own space as a lawyer, mm -hmm. people were saying, so how are we supposed to flirt? How, oh. am, I how, how am I supposed to mm -hmm. hit on somebody? Mm -hmm. how, how am I supposed to, you know, and there's, there's a huge distinction between paying someone a compliment and jumping down their pants. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Let's, let's be clear. Let's yeah. be very, very clear. clear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's also a huge distinction mm. yeah. between forcing yourself on someone even though they're saying no, no. Mm. Um, and you having a consensual relationship with someone. Mm -hmm. And finally, there is a, an, an even bigger distinction mm -hmm. when you're a person with authority mm. and forcing yourself on somebody and making an assumption that such person can say yes. Mm. Because if your boss tells you, let's meet at 7 p.m., in as much as a statement is just, let's meet at 7 p.m., and he could say, I did not say we must meet, he's your boss. Yeah. And so we need to understand the circumstances that determine him saying, let's meet equals your salary, mm. equals whether or not you have a job tomorrow, equals whether or not you'll be able to pay your rent or have transport. And so a statement is never just a statement. No. Yeah. I feel like we've just had a course where? in. <laughs> where, where, where? You know, where? I'll, I'll tell you why, and we're going to take a short break. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah there was pin drop silence, <laughs> and everyone is just <laughs> reacting. I, I really wish, this is what I wish was being spoken about in the workplace, in campus, mm -hmm. in schools. That. Yeah, true. That's what's missing. 
is this the so-called blurred lines. First of all, like you say, there are no blurred lines. It's mm. just mm -hmm. you cannot force yourself on somebody and say the lines were blurred. No. You know, you can't mm. flirt and then say, do something beyond that and say, but I was just flirting. Mm. But I really feel that when it's put in your face that way, mm. the way Judy has explained it, when it's when the mirror, because what she's done is held a mirror yeah. to all the wrongs along that chain that go wrong. It's mm. very hard to backtrack. Yeah. So honestly, if there's the one thing I wish for is that we, we cared enough to carry these conversations mm. in all institutions, mm. literally, and, and almost mandate it, mm. just so that people at the very least are aware. Mm -hmm. Because I know we might think people are aware, the more and more, in as much as I push back and say, there's all this information you should know by now. Sometimes people just, out of ignorance, unconscious <laughs> bias, intentionality, mm. they don't know. So I think it's just incredibly important to spell it out that way. Um, we'll be back. Um, after this short break to continue on Your Voice Matters. Welcome back. This is Your Voice Matters. Use the hashtag Your Voice Matters and Act for Equal as well with Better for Kenya, Equality Now and Capital FM. Today we're focusing on sexual harassment in campus and we've had an incredible first half. I think just when you think it's bad, <laughs> you go back to what Judy talked about and you yeah. realize there's just too many deep, deep set issues, mm. institutional issues, cultural issues, too many preconceived notions that are affecting the lives of students on campus. Quite literally, these are people's lives that are disrupted. This is trauma. Um, in worst cases, it's they're completely, their lives are in danger. And so why are we still here now in 2021 with the policies and the law talking about sexual harassment on campus as a very real reality for thousands of students everywhere. And so um, I'm still with Abel Mutua, Foy Wamboe, and Judy Gitao, and I want to um, put this to, to the two of you. Mm. Um, this is about what's next, and I know we ask that question a lot, and sometimes yeah. you feel like, okay, then what else can we do? Mm -hmm. I always truly believe there's a lot you can do, mm -hmm. even if it means you know, starting in a certain way and scaling and going big. Mm -hmm. um, for you, Abel, I think you still do a fair bit in campus, correct me if I'm wrong, or work with mm -hmm. campus mm -hmm. students, ETC. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you are big on storytelling, correct. whether it's video, TV, ETC. Mm -hmm. Using all that, the, the platform you have, the yeah. insights you have, mm -hmm. um, how do you think you can begin to shift the needle in having these yeah. conversations That's and kind correct. of making campus students aware of their rights and, yeah. Oh, Janet, can I shock you? Please do. <laughs> <laughs> so I have done a total of 102 stories on my YouTube channel. Wow. The number one, like the story that went viral on that channel was a story on GBV. And now I feel mm -hmm. so ashamed that I have never been able to tell another similar story and there are so many out here. Mm -hmm. So now after what Judy just said, I feel the need to now keep, mm -hmm. like Jeff mm -hmm. said, mm -hmm. We, the moment we stop talking is the moment we start fighting. Mm -hmm. So let's keep talking. I will do as many stories as possible because now I understand that mm -hmm. these are th things that need to be said. Mm -hmm. Some of the things Judy said, I had, I had no clue. Like mm -hmm. I did not know the road has gone all the way up mm -hmm. to the judiciary. Like mm -hmm. now it's a system issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we can't. We, mm -hmm. can't, we can't treat it as kawaida, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just the usual, no, 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 I think yeah. let's just make it deliberate. Mm -hmm. I, there's something, uh, Bim Kurugenz is here and we've always <laughs> wanted to do uh, <laughs> a, cas a cas segment about women. Now I'm starting to rethink it yeah. and, and just have a whole segment, just talk about this because it's mm -hmm. an issue and it mm -hmm. needs to be addressed. Yeah, and I think even coming from that perspective as, as, a, as an influencer who also happens to be a man who's mm -hmm. in that who's space, I think. Who's raising a daughter. Who's raising a daughter. Correct. There you so go. It really needs to yeah. be said, man. Oh, I, I, I love the conviction that <laughs> this, is, this is what we need to do yeah. Yeah. Totally going forward. Yeah, because if some of the things I'm learning here today, mm -hmm. and me, I have access to information, mm -hmm. but I'm learning these things here, mm -hmm. thanks to Judy. Mm -hmm. How many other people out here like me, mm -hmm. they have no clue that these things are going mm -hmm. on? Yeah. We can't assume. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So that's let's just yeah, let's do it. Let's keep talking. That's yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <sighs> I think for me, um, I I'm grateful that I have the platform that I have. Mm. But I want to say that e each of us has influence in our own ways. Correct. Like in a span mm. of maybe your lifetime or whatever, maybe you could meet a thousand people, interact with a thousand people, yeah. either in passing or directly. 
Um, and that means you have an influence on those 1,000 people. Correct. Those 1,000 people go and interact with another 1,000 people. And then, you know, it's a, yeah. co it's a consistent chain. True. And if you have 200,000 followers or uh, 400? 200,000, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> 400, I'm going to say it's 400,000. No, for Instagram, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's a company. It's a um, You know, we all have our different ways and our different communities that we have. And the only thing that we have power in and one of the things that we can do in our own ways is to just continue talking about these things. I think we saw in 2020 and even spilling over to 2021 the power of social media mm. and the power of having conversations. Things that were happening in the States had a ripple effect here in Kenya yes, yes, and yes, in yes. Africa. And you know, it's, it's, it, that's how it works. There's always a ripple effect and so we have to keep talking about things. I mean, you may feel like you're small in the speck of the universe, mm. like a speck of dust, but we are all intertwined, we're like a network. Mm -hmm. And we have to consistently remember that and the things that we discuss, the things that we accept, the things that we, you know, we, we normalize, it will have a ripple effect on the people who come after us. And for me, I feel like a very big responsibility because I have a lot of kids on my platforms. Mm -hmm. um, even people who are like, y like primary kids, yeah. people in the estate, kids in the True. estate, when I'm leaving the house, they're like, boy, hi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And so for me, I feel a huge responsibility on my shoulders yeah. mm -hmm. to have conversations like this and to be brave enough to talk about them and not when you talk about sensationalized content. Mm, yeah. And, you know, I mean, it's nice. I mean, I do like what I wear mm. and I do like sharing that. But also these are conversations that we need to have because mm. they're going to, I mean, I, God, I would not want to be let's say 40, mm. and still be seated here having the yeah. same conversation. Yeah, it would literally break my heart. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because what are we doing then? Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Very well said. I think before I, I come to Judy, again, back to you for as, as uh, somebody who's still in campus, who's got peers in campus, ETC, um, what are your concerns moving forward? What are your thoughts of the immediate way in which women and girls can begin to be more aware of some of these issues that are happening. Uh, what would you want to speak to, to the experiences of students like that, being one yourself? Mm -hmm. And how do you think you can even begin to, to band together to, okay. to kind of shift things, yeah? <sighs> okay, um, I th what I think has happened over the course of time is some of these things have been normalized so mm. much, and I think we've talked so much about that. Mm. And so you'd find someone going through the circumstances and they're not able to speak up and I think the most important thing right now could, could be um, creating a community of people who are like-minded. I saw recently in, in the BBC documentary, well, not recently, I think it was last year, mm -hmm. um, and they were talking about how there's a, a support group that was created in a university that was teaching girls self-defense skills. I mean, of course, it sucks that we have to learn mm. some of these things. Yeah. Like, who wants to be <laughs> going for self-defense classes? Yeah. You want to live your life normally, True. like yeah. any other human being, mm. uh, like a man, mm. basically. Mm. Um, <laughs> but those are some of the things that people are being forced to do. Yeah. And I think I know, especially when it comes to student-teacher relationships, one of the most important, one of the things that cause women to accept the sexual advances is because there's a, a, a high standard that's been put on education. And I'm not saying that education is not important, it is, but at what expense? Uh, is it at the expense of my dignity, of my mental health? And I think those are conversations we need to start having um, as students, as in our families, in school, even in primary, if we could be talking about this, yeah. normalizing that, okay, yes, education is important but let it not affect your self-dignity, mm -hmm. your mental health. Because mm -hmm. there are people who commit suicide because of some of these yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think normalizing such conversations and being open to having communities around us, support groups in schools, mm -hmm. I think that would be essential in making sure that we are being able to handle this situation. Yeah, that's great. Thank you yeah. so much for that. Yeah. That's really great, yeah. So gosh, I mean, uh, what's been said is, is so brilliant. I'm just taking, taking it and you know, running with it. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, I'll say three things at the end, but then let me just jump on first to, to what has already been said. Mm -hmm. um, to, to one, to say that uh, platforms can be used to let w girls know that, then that they should speak up, that they're not alone. Mm -hmm. That that one girl who has had a lecturer push back mm -hmm. on her 
knows that you're not alone, speak up. So that part of the stories we tell, what we are reaching out just to tell them is speak up, someone will step up and meet you halfway. Mm -hmm. just, just speak up, don't believe uh, the naysayers and the noise that is coming at you from every side, mm -hmm. speak up. Um, it's, it's what I think we said at the very first conversation, um, the bully speaks loudest and so we keep quiet mm -hmm. and we, allow, we empower them. The more we are silent, the more they are empowered and emboldened to keep pushing, to keep being loud. Mm -hmm. So speak up and someone else will join you and by the time you're done, everybody will be shutting them down. Mm -hmm. So just speak up yeah. and so I, I really like that. And then <laughs> you talked about the premium that's placed on education and I remember um, uh, someone in, again, in my campus who was um, victimized by a lecturer. And this is somebody who's come from uh, the back of beyond, mm -hmm. you know, for example, uh, Maralal, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. has only just made it, is the first person in the community to do law, mm -hmm. and is in your class, and then are denied a grade, and then mm -hmm. they don't graduate. I mean, do you even understand the implications of what you've done? Mm -hmm. yeah. For a quick lay with a girl who you forget, mm -hmm. you've cost her her life. Yeah. You really have. And so beginning to understand the implications of what it is we do and the implications of silence and implication of not putting in place systems to ensure that the real bully is shut down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing to say is, um, and again, in every conversation, and I'm sorry, I'll bring it up, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, we need everybody on board. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's not a competition. Offset, um, I mean, I was saying this, it's like if you find an accident and we put the accident victim in an ambulance and we're having them taken to hospital, and you who's not injured is insisting, I also want a ride in the, in, in, in the ambulance. <laughs> I, I, want, I want to be, you know, I'm, I, that's preferential treatment. They're being treated very well. Why are they going to, are you injured? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's, what's your problem? Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is the attitude we find within our community of mm. people who then say, girls are, you know, but, but people are also being harassed, but mm. we also have other challenges in mm. campus. Mm. Yes, you do. And let's address those two. Yeah. Yeah. But why not address this? Someone mm -hmm. needs an ambulance. Why not just get them on it? Yeah. And then onto the three things I was talking about, it's, let's start with what, you know, Abel said at the beginning, mm -hmm. it's norms and culture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. in, in, our, in our different platforms, there's, there's no one who's a spec for it. Mm -hmm. You can change norms, mm -hmm. you can change culture. People look up to you and you can show them that that, that really doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, nobody likes a bully, nobody yeah. likes a guy who forces himself on girls, mm -hmm. nobody, that's a rapist. Mm. You're, you're not hot, mm -hmm. you're not cool, yeah. mm -hmm. you didn't score, <laughs> you're a rapist. Mm -hmm. So just norms and cultures and changing that. Yeah. The second thing is norms, I mean, sorry, is laws. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know we say we've got laws, we've got policies. I tell you, Janet, if I list the laws, you, you'd all be shocked. I think probably 16, our, our legal framework to protect people from sexual violence is robust. It's absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. From the Sexual Offences Act all the way to the fact that our constitution provides in Article 2 that we've signed, if we've signed and ratified international instruments that protect us, they're part of our laws. Mm -hmm. So there's, we're covered. Mm -hmm. So let's make sure everybody knows that. Yeah. Let the girls know the law backs you up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you're speaking up, you're not speaking up on your own authority. The mm -hmm. law backs you up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's speak about the laws and let everybody know that you're backed up by the law and push it. Someone will stand up. Mm -hmm. You're backed up by the law. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing is systems. Mm -hmm. um, we must agitate and advocate in whichever space we are mm -hmm. for systems. It's fantastic that many universities, for example, will say, oh, we have a social... Um, social worker office, mm -hmm. we have the counselor's office, mm -hmm. but um, here age will show. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the last time when I was in campus, there was no such office. Mm -hmm. We had social, social affairs, but that was for our room and our food and such like things. There was mm -hmm. no social office. And so yeah. many, many public universities don't necessarily have an office that you go to. And if you compare that with universities, mm -hmm. for example, abroad until quite recently, when you'd go to your counselor, they actually had the option of telling you, so do you want this matter to end here or do you want it to take a legal process? Uh. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> so the idea is we have to agitate for systems. Yeah. We have to advocate for mm. systems. Yeah. And we do that by understanding systems. Mm -hmm. And we do that by understanding what if somebody was to call you right now and say, I've been raped right now and tell I've been violated. Do you, will you know who to call? Mm. Will you know where to go? Mm. So we need to know that and begin to advocate. There's got to be a social space in, in campus, 
Mm. There's got to be a referral chain from that campus to a police station mm -hmm. for investigation. It's got to be there. And there's got to be a linkage from that social place to a hospital or to a medical center. Those three things have to be standard mm -hmm. so that justice is not just seen, but it's actually done. Mm. Mm. Justice is actually done. Yeah, I mean, those three things are so important. Really, do you know it is exactly those three things mm -hmm. that made Singapore to what it is right now? Them, they weren't, they weren't dealing with the uh, GBV, mm. they were dealing with economic crimes, but it was those three things. Mm. They started from Ukochini, mm. the culture. Ukiba kwa village to Nadil now. Culture, policy, and systems. Mm. There we go. So it will work much, okay. I'm certain. And mm and the intentionality and consistency. Look, mm. even, even if you're watching this, and I, and I think sometimes we need to carry these conversations in all our spaces. Mm. We, don't, we don't wait for the live and then log off and then move on. Yeah. I think if there's anything That's we can ask of you who's yeah. watching is carry this with you That's and right. start on the WhatsApp group, <laughs> the family WhatsApp group to yeah. talk about this. Mm. Um, in your Chama group, um, when you're out there, even if it's with the boys on the weekend, whatever it is, mm. if it's, you know, your, your high school son or daughter, I think if, you, if we carry this in our hearts, in our souls, in our, in our families, in our institutions, yeah. and we begin to realize this is an all of us issue, because sometimes I think it's so much of, oh, that, I haven't dealt with that, that happens, that doesn't happen around me, that's not happened to me. I think that's the biggest thing we're facing. We completely compartmentalize our, li our lives. And naturally so. I mean, you already have enough burden. Mm -hmm. If it's burden of care, burden of work, whatever it is, I get yeah. that. But this is closer home than you think. And so my call to action is honestly, please carry this conversation with you. Everywhere you go, challenge yourself, whether you're going to take it to your workplace, whether you're going to take it to your school, start a tweet thread, I don't know, whatever it is, just, is it Twitter thread or tweet thread? I feel like I totally, <laughs> <laughs> but um, carry it with you. Yeah. Because I think in, uh, for all of us, we, we, we want to, we carry these issues. I know, you know, Judy does, I know you guys as well. Mm. And that's the reason I, I have conversations like this and I'm part of conversations like this is because I genuinely feel so burdened that I carry it with me. And when you carry it with you, yeah. you invest in understanding what the issues are then you invest in the role you can play, you invest in what needs to be done, mm. the little things you can do that go a long way. So if you carry it with you, you invest in understanding it more. And please remember, the national toll-free number is 1195, 1195. Um, if you know somebody who's in danger, if it's you who's in danger, you can call that as an immediate resource and be directed in the right way. That's 1195. We'll also make sure we put it in our captions and on the screen. Please share that as well so that everyone has access to that information. Even as we build up to the Generation Equality Forum on the 30th of June, please register. It's really an opportunity to take stock with the rest of the world. Hear what world leaders are saying, philanthropists, um, high profile individuals, different CSOs around the world. End of the month, 30th June, um, for a few days. It's taking stock collectively with the rest of the world. And take part, you know, log in and listen to some of the conversations. That's how you start investing in the conversations and, and playing your part. So please register where you can and please keep watching these conversations, sharing them and sharing your thoughts on what more needs to be done. So thank you so much. Thank you to Abel and Foy and Judy as always. Um, and thank you as well for watching Your Voice Matters. I'm Janet Bogo and we'll see you next time. Awesome. Nice.